Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we invite you. You are the teacher. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Open our understanding, I pray, so that we can understand who you are. And all of God's kids said, Amen. As I travel all over the United States and the world, I see the church full of people who go to church because that's what you're supposed to do, right? They go for the activities, they go to ease their conscience, they go to punch their clock. Many people are fans or admirers of Jesus. And if you're only a fan or admirer of Jesus, then the warfare won't be too bad. But if you make a decision to choose to follow Jesus, into the realm of the supernatural where your only enemy is. The Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly high places. I want to inform you tonight, you're going to find out in this series that Jesus is not a genie or magician. He didn't come to this world to die to make your life happy so you could have the American dream. Matter of fact, American wasn't even America when Christ came. So as we start the series, we're talking about him as a physician because so many people form their doctrine according to their experience instead of according to the word. I've been places preaching, I'll be saying, you know, Jesus is the healer. And someone will raise their hand and interrupt the service, which uh, this is not a raise your hand service, so please don't do so. And they'll say, but my experience is, I said, well, your experience is insufficient to the Word of God. Your doctrine must be the Word of God. If Christ heals and you die, he's still the healer. A person asked me just recently, why is this person sick all the time? I said, well, they're excessively overweight. When you disobey the laws of health, don't get mad at God. You come to the, the prayer line and you want healed from sugar diabetes and you got five Snickers in your back pocket, don't get mad at God. Amen? You don't drink plenty of water. I see people that are like, oh, did you hear so-and-so went to the emergency room? They kept them overnight. What was wrong with them? They were dehydrated. And you ask them, well, do you know water's good for you? Yeah, but I don't like water. I was at a place preaching just recently, and as I was preaching there, during the worship, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and he said, many people in this church, not this church, the place where I was preaching, many people in this church have been in the Garden of Gethsemane and they have left before they surrendered. Christ went there saying, if I can get out of this, let me get out of this. Many times we go and, and say, God, we go with the blueprint. God, I come to pray. Many people want to serve Christ, but on an advisory capacity only. Lord, let me tell you how this should be done. Here's the blueprints of my life and how I'm expecting you to, to answer this. But tonight we're talking about the physician because so many people say he heals, he doesn't heals, he no longer heals. There's a teaching called cessation, which means all the gifts and everything's done. Now we serve a powerless God. Though they say he does have power, but he chooses not to use it anymore. Uh, then why serve him? But he's not a genie to perform for you. He doesn't work for you. You're supposed to work for him. We've got to get, you got to know your place before you can get your grace. So we're talking about a physician. Let me give you a definition of physician. It is a person who is skilled in the art of physical healing. I got some nurses in the room. Let me tell you, there are, there's three types of healing. There's natural healing, which you've heard me call automatic healing and natural healing, which means God has placed in us a law of health that if you cut your hand, you, you bruise yourself, you do something, the body automatically, unless your body's out of whack, begins to heal itself. Amen. The second type of healing is medical healing. But medical, let me explain something to you. Praise God for the wisdom God has given man so that atheists and different people, and even Christians can be healed through medicine. But actually, medicine doesn't heal you, and doctors can't heal you. They can only assist in the natural healing that God has placed in there. So actually, all healing comes from God. You need to have that understanding. 
Now, so don't leave here saying he doesn't like doctors. No, I, I do like doctors, and I do like nurses, and, and I believe in that. Most people don't have the faith, if they do get healed, to keep a healing. And uh, here's one of the reasons. A person asked me, said, why is it so hard to get people healed and for them to stay healed in America? I said, because they're too educated. I, I hate to say this, but uh, you can get healed if you're dumb. Real easy. Oh, wow, maybe that's why I walk in divine health. Glory to God. Because I don't need a lot of detail, and I don't have to figure everything out. If it's available, I want it. Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 through 13. We're talking about Jesus as a physician. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto him, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Actually, what was happening was he was sitting with sinners and people that were un unsaved. Of course, no one was saved at that time. But he was sitting with people that were in a wrong spiritual condition. And the people who, quote, thought they was okay, the Pharisees and Sadducees, says, why does your master sit with people that are publicans? Publicans were called uh, sinners. Uh, you know, it's really crazy. They also called tax collectors sinners. So if IRS, if you're listening, you might want to study up on that. <laughs> but when he heard that, he said, those that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So someone that walks in divine health is in good shape, doesn't hardly ever get sick. They really don't like my message, and they, they really don't seek me out. And then what's really crazy is even though we have a town of sick people, so many people I can count that have died from different things, and I've known them, and they know me, and they have to watch on Facebook all the miracles, signs, and wonders that God is doing, and they, they don't even ever contact or say, could you come and pray for this person? It's simply amazing. Because once or twice they've had an encounter, and it didn't seem that the God of Israel that they proclaimed they serve, he didn't perform up to their standards. And now their faith is only in doctors. And the Bible says we know in part. So even only doctors can only give part. We prophesy in part. We know in part. Total wisdom is not released to man because God will never create an environment where he is not needed. So if you say, this is what God's called me to do, and you can do it without God, this is what you've called yourself to do because it's easy. Because if you're going to follow God, you're going to be a fan or a follower, which one are you going to be? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, those that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I want to give you a scripture where he's putting himself as a physician. But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Repentance is not crying and saying, I'm sorry, and going out partying all week, then go back, as the Catholic doctrine is, you just go and, and repent to a man. He tells you to do a bunch of works. That's anti-scripture. It's not doctrine. It's improper. It's wrong. Repentance is where you change your mind of the way that you're thinking. You, you've got to understand this. Because the world was living a, by the spirit of the world, was living a certain way. Christ came and said, my kingdom is at hand. Now, repentance means quit living by the world's kingdom and start living by my kingdom. And you will find that information right here. And when you come up to something you don't understand, you think it's foolish. I think tongues is foolish. Oh, I think when people fall down, it's foolish. That means that you are in the flesh and you are carnal. Because the Bible says those in their natural mind do not understand the things of God. To them it is foolish. I mean, you need to be the person judging yourself according to the word. Well, that's just foolish. I don't see why people have to holler and praise and worship. Why do you have to holler in your football game? Why do you act like an idiot when, you, when your kid's in the parade on the ball team? Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Whew, come on, somebody. Jesus is the head of my treasure department. And I put my kids in there, my family in there, so I holler for everybody. <laughs> Amen. He is the great physician for you note takers. He created us. I'm convinced he can fix us. Now, you all know, and you've heard Pastor Karen and Pastor Andy speak and teach these things that says we are a spirit, a soul, and a body. How many people believe Jesus is concerned about your spirit? Well, of course, he died to your spirit. Doesn't have to spend eternity in hell. Is Jesus concerned about your soul? 
You don't want you a, a, a babbling, crazy mess and can't even think or, or anything. Of course. But isn't it sad that he's only concerned about two-thirds of you? <laughs> but that would be the belief of many in the body of Christ today. They believe Jesus doesn't heal anymore. So that means only, they only think Jesus is concerned about two-thirds of you, your spirit and your soul, your, your mind, will, and emotions. But your body, hey, you're left on your own. And if you don't have a, a, a trauma care, <laughs> that's reformed Obamacare, <laughs> then, then you're in a bad place. Our poor body. <laughs> you liked that, didn't you? God heals three ways. Let me give this to you again. Naturally. That's the automatic killing already in your body. You cut yourself, the blood clots, it begins to scab, etc. Number two, medically. The assistance through doctors and medicine, which actually aids and assists the first one of natural healing. Don't overlook this type of healing. Medical is very, very important. Surgery and medicine are not a second class healing. God has given men wisdom in these areas. See, I think a lot of times we hinder God as the physician because we go to him with our preconceived ideal of how he's going to heal us. But don't you agree with me that he didn't put mud in every blind man's eye? And even in the Old Testament, Hezekiah, the prophet came to him and said, put figs, a natural remedy, on your boil. The boil was killing him by poisons, and now that natural remedy was healed. So we actually need to go to Christ through the Holy Spirit and say, what is the, what is the prescription for my problem? Eventually, I, I have to write a book that ha has to deal with, um, with fasting and weight loss bring healing. Well, I can give you a perfect example. A Andrew, Pastor Andrew is going to be in the book because since he started doing this certain diet he's doing, he used to be tormented, couldn't sleep with acid reflux and, and had so much problems. Since this time he's done, he's lost like, what, about 40 pounds? And because he's eaten a certain way, now he no longer has. His remedy was through his diet. So sometimes that third of the body... And so you say, oh, so we had to heal ourselves. No, he had to follow the instructions that was on his heart that God led him. Now he's got it, but see, he's got to do it by faith. Whatever you do, whether it's a diet, whether it's in the gym, when I go to the, when I wake up at 5, 5, 5.30 in the morning and get ready to go to the gym, I'm in faith. I'm in faith and I'm not going to lay back down, turn on the snooze. Because <laughs> I know Jesus is the physician, but I also know I have to obey the laws of health. Not only just for me to live an extended life, but for me to set in an example to other people as I stand before in the pulpit. Number three type of healing is the miraculously. This is where the Spirit of God sovereignly or through His gifts in the body overrides the laws of health of nature. And He does it supernatural. And it can be also called unexplainable. Matthew chapter 1 verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion. Make that note right there. Moved with compassion. Put forth his hand and touched him. Oh, that was a no-no in them days. You didn't touch somebody unclean. If you touched the dead, you was unclean. You had to stay outside the camp seven days. If you touched leprosy, not only was you unclean, but now you would, would contact, you would contract, you would get leprosy. But Jesus moved with the compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And that's so crazy because from that one scripture, people will pray, God heal me if it be your will. I want to educate you today what the will of God is, and that is that he's already released healing through his son, Jesus Christ. He's also released wisdom through his Holy Spirit and through his word and his Bible. So find your prescription by faith in the name of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Find out what it is. Because see, you're a body, so you're responsible to take care of that body by eating, drinking, water. You've got to do your part and obey the laws of health. If you get demonically attacked or generationally curses and stuff, you can now use the name of Jesus and break those 
doing your part not to leave a hole or a portal of because you're not eating right or taking vitamins or whatever it might be that your body lacks. So we've got to use the wisdom that God has given doctors. We've got to use the wisdom that we get from the Bible. And you've got no excuse. My mama had a pacemaker, but I'm not going to wear one. The only pace that I'm going to set is the one the maker sets for me. Oh, I preached there. You didn't even get it. <laughs> he said, I will be thy clean. As soon as he had spoken, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Many of you have come to the prayer line for healing, but because you couldn't click on the computer, same day shipping. Can I extradite this somehow? <laughs> Sometime your healing is a process for your learning. I see mirac uh, miracles like crazy. One day uh, traveling down south, my knee blew out. It took me 53 days to get a healing. And I said, Lord, why won't you heal me? There was a man two feet from me, same problem. You just healed him. Just let it splash over on this knee. He said, no, your remedy is to speak the word of God to it and believe past the pain. Wow. Write that down. Sometimes you got to believe past the pain. Sometimes you got to believe past the circumstances. Joseph was locked up. Didn't look like his word was coming to pass. Joseph was thrown in a pit. Didn't look like his word was coming to pass. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And straightway charged him forthwith and sent him away. And he saith unto him, See thou, say nothing to any man, and go thy way. Show thyself to the priest. See, he didn't go against the laws. He didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. Show yourself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for testimony. Look there. I want you to mark that in your Bible. Jesus told him, I healed you, but because you're cleansed, now you've got to make an offering. Wow. I know you don't want to hear that. He wasn't buying his healing. He was already healed, but he says, but you are held responsible that when you are cleansed or fixed, you should make an offering. Let me tell you about a girl that made an offering because Jesus brought some supernatural. He showed up as a physician. Her name was Mary. And she had a brother named Lazarus. And Lazarus died. Now you can go to Luke and read the story. It's phenomenal. But it said Jesus was sitting at a table with Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the sister Mary took this special ointment that they say was worth a year's salary. Somebody say resurrection offering. Ha <laughs> ha! She knew she couldn't pay for it, but her gratitude wanted to say thank you. I find it amazing that it was an offering for a resurrection that was to anoint him for his death where he was soon to be resurrected. Oh, my God, come on, somebody. Hmm. I'm preaching better than you're amen. And... <laughs> Jesus told him, say nothing to any man. Go thy way, show thyself to the priest, offer for thy cleansing, those things which Moses commanded for testimony unto them. <coughs> Excuse me. But he went out and began to publish it much and, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city and was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. You know, a man's got to be a good teacher, a man's got to be a good physician, a man's got to be a good leader. If people will live the, leave the comfort of their home, their synagogues, their churches, and go to a place where there's no malls, no quick food places, and they don't even got nothing to eat, somebody's saying something worth healing. Because you can watch the crowd on Sunday morning. My God, won't ever beat the Baptist or the buffet if he'll shut up. Come on. <laughs> These guys tarried for three days with no food. We call church fast three days. During those three days, we usually don't hear from people from the church. They stay as far away as they can. Well, I couldn't call. My mouth was full. 
Mm. Moved with compassion and touched him. Why is Jesus a physician? You know, there's teachers today who tell you that he healed the sick, and this is with, going along with the message of called cessation. They say he healed the sick because the scripture said that he himself took our infirmity. He did it to prove that he was the Messiah, and that's the only reason. That's not true. He didn't have to prove, he didn't do it to prove the Messiah, he was the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need to understand that once you get to a place where you know that you know, it doesn't matter if people agree with you. He did it because he loved us. <laughs> but I'm really upset tonight. Maybe somebody can pray for me later after the service. But I'm so upset that he only loved for three and a half years during his ministry. And now he doesn't love anymore. He healed because he loved while he's here on the earth. But he doesn't love us anymore, so he doesn't heal anymore. Isn't that ridiculous? Yes. While he was on this earth, he said, I am the way. But now he's, he's going to heaven, so he's not the way anymore. I am the door, I am the truth. Where do we go for the truth now? Because that, those things were all together, and they say it was just while he was here. But you won't receive something if you can't wrap your head around it. See, I have an electronics buying addiction. And I don't understand electronics. But, but I thank God for them. They told me the lights were flashing in the mom's room because the lights were bad. So I had, I had an electrician come in, uh, my nephew. He's my nephew. I don't know why I call him an electrician. He's just my nephew. And he was here. I said, go to and check them lights. He said, these ballasts are bad. He said, they got a new bulb out that doesn't even need a ballast. So he took the ballast out, put the bulb out. It's very, very expensive. And, and they put them up there. So now those, they burn with no ballast. And so now I, I've been going crazy when I walk in and see the lights in the foyer out. So, so now I've got all those lights ordered. And, and that's because, you know, when I walk in, I look for lights out. And I, I look for weed eating, needing done. I look for stuff. Because why? Because this is my treasure. No, he's with me wherever I go and no matter what church I go to, but this is my assignment. Even though I'm not the pastor now, it's still my assignment because when, when, when I wasn't here and there was another guy here and he tried to take the place away from Pastor Dave, I would drive by and say, Lord, if I could just weed eat this, just, I can't, we can't even go back there. If I could just weed eat there, if I could just cut the grass there until I was cutting grass, I said, Lord, could you forgive me for praying that prayer? <laughs> no. Don't forgive me, Lord. Why was Jesus a physician? Because he loved people. Mark chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. When Jesus heard it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Now, as I read this, I can picture it in my mind because I've been to Israel five times. When he gets into the boat, he gets to the sea, and they go around this side. My tour guide would always, and my, she is my interpreter when I preached too, she would say, and she would break it in the Bible and say, see where it says here? This is where it happened. You're like, oh my gosh. I stood on the grounds where Saul was killed and his son was killed. I'm like, oh my gosh. So on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with, I better prove I'm the Messiah and point out a couple of scriptures, because everybody knows that the Messiah has to heal five people a day, and I've only healed two, so you guys got to rush and get me three sick people so I can keep, so I can prove I'm the Messiah. Wow. <laughs> he wasn't into that. He was moved with compassion. He loved them. And Jesus went forth, saw a great multitude, and moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. If I could just... If I could just get Jesus to love me like he loved them. Wait a minute. Isn't he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. Yeah, there's a very wrong teaching that Jesus only healed because he was here to prove he was the Messiah. He wasn't trying to prove he, that he was the Son of God. He, he, he is the Son of God. He wasn't trying to prove he was someone. He is that one. 
the scriptures foretells. All prophetic scriptures about him were inspired by him. And he was them before he manifested in the flesh. Huh. He wasn't doing it to say, when the Messiah comes, he will heal five people per day. I've only healed three. Go out and give me two more. When you begin to teach healing, many people, pay attention to this. How many people speak Hebrew in here? I mean, even a little bit. We got a Jew in the background there. Okay. A Jewish man. Okay, when you begin teaching healing, many e people begin to try to speak Hebrew. And the word they try to speak is called yeah, but. I know Jesus can heal, yeah, but. <laughs> he doesn't heal everyone. <laughs> you learned some new Hebrew tonight, huh? yeah, but. I know he heals, yeah, but not everyone. Let me tell you a few things Jesus isn't. He isn't a sensationalist. He isn't trying to show off and, and draw attention to himself. That's not why he heals. He heals because he loves you. He wasn't a confessionalist. And I'll explain that because I'm a faith man. I'm a word man. But every movement has a hyper movement to it. Write this down, note takers. Wherever there's holy fire, there will be wild fire. I heard that from Randy Clark when someone asked him. You know, you're the evangelist that was used to bring the revival to Toronto. There was some really strange stuff. He goes, yeah, there was, wasn't there? He just agreed with them. He said, well, sounds like you're agreeing. He goes, well, that's because wherever there's holy fire, there's wild fire. Many people don't want nothing to do with tongues because... Uh, many people are emotional when they pray in tongues. And I'm like, chill out. It's not a body thing. It's not a soul thing. It's a Holy Ghost thing. Wow. It's a spirit thing. And the, more, the, the less you let your body and your mind be involved with it, the more you'll be in faith. You'll tell, so I watch people, you'll tell them to prophesy, they'll be like, and they'll start trying to pray. I'm like, oh, you, so you're telling me you was out of the spirit. And now you're trying to get in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, you ain't got to turn the switch on. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's a hyper faith movement. I, I sent a text to a person who's in the hospital tonight. I said, how's he doing? And she says, I have two answers. He's doing perfect, no pain or no problem. Second answer is he's got blood and he's in severe pain and the medicine's not working. Which answer do you want to receive from me? I said, the second one so that I know how to pray. She goes, well, you know, I know that I've heard you say uh, calling things a bean, so they are. I said, listen, faith does not deny reality. Faith defies reality. Because you're in pain, you take an aspirin. Because you're fat, you get on the treadmill. Come on, somebody. I got a friend in Texas. He calls me all the time. This dude is hyper in the gym now. I mean, he's, he's got some guns and chest is roaring. I'm just like, dude, you make me look bad. He, he just really got into it. Back in the day when we first met him, he was not into there. He was a, he was a, he was a fluffy Mexican guy. And, uh, and, you know, I was in the gym back then. And I said, man, you need to get in the gym. He called me. He said, brother, you're going to be so proud of me. I said, what, man? He goes, I was on the treadmill today. I said, dude, I'm so proud of you. He goes, and next week I might turn it on, brother. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. I drove by the gym quite a while before I joined. <laughs> Jesus... There's a hyper faith movement. There's a hyper word movement. There's a hyper grace. Some hyper healing is like, you, you, know, you don't go to doctors. You go to this. It, that's, see, that's an extreme. There's counterfeit $100 bills only because there's real $100 bills. There can't be false prophets unless there's real prophets. Someone will be snotting. They'll be dripping down their face. They'll be coughing and say, man, it looks like, like you're a mess. Uh, your nose is running. No, no, my nose isn't running. I can see snot. Dude, dude, they see no, no, I'm here. No. Dude, well, you know, 
if you're going around saying, I'm sick, I'm busted, disgusted, can't be trusted, yeah, that's a negative confession. But you can say, hey, pray for me, man. I'm, ca- I'm in the process of catching a healing. Come on. You can see the stuff uh, happening. When I tell people I walk in divine health, sometimes people get mad at me. I've had people tell me they, they knew people that hated that I walk in divine health and they'd actually prayed that I'd get sick to humble me. I said, I'm not in pride. I'm in healing. There's a difference. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Word. Jesus was the Word become flesh. When will you manifest the flesh with the Word? When do you go take the prosperity scriptures and not get out of balance with it and manifest in flesh to where your bills are paid, your credit is good, and your kids have what they need? When are you going to get the Word of God in, in healing and divine wisdom and stuff? When, when are you going to manifest flesh to where what the Word says is you're wearing it? Not on your clothes, but, but in your continents and in your blood, you know, all this stuff. Recently, uh, someone told me, said, why do you wear contact? I, I watched your Facebook, and you see so many people get healed with eye problems and everything. I said, you know what? What you tolerate will dominate. I, I just don't pray for myself that much. I'm so busy with everybody else. I slap a contact, one contact in is all I wear. And I'm like, it's the night. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm reading. I don't have my contact in. Wow. I just happened to notice that. <laughs> the slimmer I get, the better my vision improves. There must have been a fatty eyelid on there. <laughs> hey, I've, I've, I've changed ethnicity since I began losing weight. I used to have more chins than a Chinese phone book. Come on now. Hey, it seems like things don't change. You'll go to the doctor and he'll give you antibiotics and say, take these for 14 days. On day 12, your friends will see you say, you look terrible. Yeah, but I've been, doctor, give me some antibiotics. As soon as they get in my system, I'm going to be okay. And you have faith in what the doctor says. Yeah. Wow. What about the physician? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Wow. What, what about keep saying that word, keep saying that word? You know how many years I've been saying, my daughter, my biological daughter will be on my praise team. She'll have a passport and she'll travel and she'll cast out devils and she'll heal the sick after she gets out of prison. She's in the belly of the well. She's in the process. Because see, it's never what you think it's going to be. I just noticed that when I prayed for my daughter, I didn't notice there was different boxes on delivery. There was the same day. You know why there wasn't the same day? Because it didn't take her one day to get to where she's at. The pig boy had to eat pig food a long time before he came to his right mind and said, in my father's house. In my father's house, he said, there's bread enough. But what he was saying pretty much is, is what daddy was saying is true. I, I need to get back to doing it daddy's way. Jesus is the physician. But if he was only physician for three and a half years, that means he only loved for three and a half years. And that means that he was the way, he's no longer the way, that he's no longer the truth. Come on, somebody. How can we begin to separate this? Don't deny that you're sick or ignore. Faith doesn't deny reality. Faith defies reality. Because of your sickness or disease, that's why you're applying the word. That's why you're showing up in the prayer line. That's why you're making these confessions of healing. It's not because you said it 1,600 times. The reason you confess the word is because faith comes by hearing and you're trying to get your soul to get out of the way so the body can receive it. Amen. See, I don't wait till I'm broke to start confessing financial scriptures. See, I need a residual of money coming in like you don't understand. I'm not even talking about for, I was talking to, to Andy today. I said, you know, I got so many kids coming up that I, I, I've got a granddaughter that's getting ready to need a car. I got uh, 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 twins are going to be coming up needing a car. And, and that I know they're looking toward Papa. What's what even worse is their parents are looking toward Papa. <laughs> look, look at Taylor grinning over there. Come on, Papa. Hook a girl up. <laughs> 
I'll give my nickel 98 and help your daddy out. But why can't I? As I was cutting the church grass today, I said, Lord, I'm sowing seed. Church, I'm not on church payroll. Church don't pay me. I'm the oldest grass cutter here <laughs> at the church. It was actually Andy's day. But I got here early and I said, you know what? I'm going to sow to Andy because there's a day I'm leaving before long where he's got to go out to my house. So while he's cutting my house, I don't want to be saying, Dad, going to got to cut Brian's house. Why don't he stay home and cut his own grass? <laughs> He'd be like, man, I'm just thankful that Brian cut the church for me. <laughs> what you sow, you reap. Do you believe he's a physician? Do you believe he's the way? Or do you just come for the fellowship and to meet people and to greet people? And to say, I've punched my clock. Are you just a fan of Jesus or are you a follower of Jesus? If you're a follower, you're going to get persecuted. Quit crying when you get persecuted. They literally beat the disciples and said, don't you teach in his name anymore. And they went back and they didn't start saying, I bind the principality over the air. Blah, 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 blah. They went back and said that we were counted worthy to be persecuted for Jesus. I ain't got no friends there. Nobody like me. Jesus told me in a motel room one night. I said, Lord, I'm lonely. Two nights later, I said, increase the anointing. He said, if I increase the anointing, you'll be lonelier. I said, I choose. I choose the anointing so I can set people free. Six months later, I said, Lord, I don't got a friend. I'm so lonely. He goes, and he just got quiet. And I could just hear him. He's saying, I choose the anointing. I'm like, all right, I'll shut up. <laughs> Jesus. We want to be baptized with the same baptism. They didn't even know what they were saying. He said, you will be baptized. You'll die. They'll probably never give me the key to the city of Wellesley. Do I grow up? I've never even preached there. I'm going to say 34 years. And I've never, I don't know why, I've never been allowed to preach in Wellesley. He didn't stop me. There's just never been an opening. Maybe, maybe the remembrance of me is so bad, they're like, we don't even want him in the city limits. <laughs> I don't know. But if I'm global, I can't get upset if I'm not accepted local. And the local won't accept me because they don't understand why I take money and take it overseas or take it to the Indians and take it places and say, there's plenty of people here. You have more opportunities here than they do overseas. You have welfare, you have food, you have stuff those people don't have. And it doesn't matter if they have it or don't have it. If God says go, we gotta go. And if it seems foolish, that means you're carnal. You know, it means you're in your mind. Many people don't get healed because they're too educated. Many people don't get healed because they're in their mind. Okay, you got 30 seconds. I was in the prayer line. I'm walking out to the car. I'm not healed yet. That stuff don't work. Your experience has become your rabbi. He isn't a dispensationalist. Dispensation means error of time that each slot is filled and each person does their thing. God was, the Father was the first dispensationalist. He, he, he came and he walked and he ate with, uh, with Abraham and, and he was there. And then, then Christ had his dispensation. Now it's called the Holy Spirit's dispensation. So he was a dispensationalist that said, hey, I was here. As soon as I leave, what I do is gone. No, it was continued in the disciples. It was continued. I got a message called More Than Twelve. There's probably about 30-some disciples and apostles and some female that it talks about. They were healing the sick. They were casting out devils. And through history, in, in my, in my uh, uh, college study and stuff, through history, they have it documented all the way from the days of Christ. Clear to now pockets of tongue-talking devil casting out dead being raised uh, Holy Ghost movements. From the time of Christ, shall not document it. You, you've got to get to a place where you walk in authority. When you walk in authority, you'll scare people. I always joke with people to climb up on a ladder to fix a light or something. 
And I'll be like, don't jump, I'll change. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say that jokingly. But if you're going to jump because I walk in authority and I preach authority, I'm not changing for you. I'll explain to you why, and I'll, I want you to see the love and the mercy. Of the if you want to see love and mercy in me, watch it with my grandkids. You see the two boys running their fingers through my hands and, and hugging me and kissing on me. And Today, the youngest one, Kellen, he was baptized in the pool. He sat on the steps, and he wouldn't go no farther. He got his vest on. And I said, okay, I'm going to dive and swim under. Then I'm going to swim back. Then I'll hold you up and we'll go out there. When I dove, his cousin, Aiden, said, just do it. <laughs> I heard that as I'm coming out of the water, and I heard splash. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I turned around, and through the encouragement, he jumped, and he had swam with his floaty on. He was swimming toward me. I'm doing it, Papa. I'm doing it. Well, let's get on to the hot tub. No. Why don't you want to do it? Because I'm doing it. <laughs> There's Aiden on the side. You can do it. Because, <laughs> you know, he is the swimming coach in the Adams family. <laughs> Quit listening to people that want to teach you something different than what the Bible says he was. Don't try to argue and, and, and get out of this, you know, with someone. Just, just know him for the physician. I literally know of doctors. People go to doctors and they tell them, you've got to lose weight. You've got to exercise. I know for a fact that's what my doctor said. You've got to exercise. You've got to lose weight. She took a piece of paper and she'd do a circle and put a line through it. She says, that's what you got to do. And she meant, cut your, what you eat in half. She was like, the circle was a plate. So I went back and I hadn't lost weight. She goes, you didn't do what I said. I said, yeah, I did. I said, I took a piece of paper with me everywhere. And every time I sat down to eat, I'd do a circle and I'd do a line through it. It didn't help me at all. Don't we all want shortcuts? Yeah. We're a microwave generation. Yeah. I'll watch couples. And couples, especially dating couples, and it's amazing, you'll watch them in church, their arms will be all over, they'll be rubbing legs, I'm like, dude, if you're that comfortable touching that girl in church, what are you doing when you ain't here? Oh, I'm a preacher. That's why we do that. We talk about stuff like that. Come on. And some people are very touchy, even married people, in public and everything else. And man, if you don't call each other, whoo, Lord have mercy. Karen would be dead. I'd be like, well, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. I ain't calling her waking her up. I don't care how many days it's been since she heard from me. She would tell me never to call again if I woke her up 1 o'clock in the morning. She could care less. Honey, does it bother you? I'm gone all the time. No, we have direct deposit. I'm in bed. I'm going to sleep. I mean, that's just, you know, that's, some people think our relationship is weird, but that's just us. And so I don't think your relationship is weird, but let's say you're a person that has to talk to each other all the time and has to touch each other all the time. What if you, with your husband or wife, treated them with the communication that you did with the father? How much time... You, you communicate with him. You'd be divorced. If you with the person that had to be touched on the, What? Do you know how ridiculous it, it seems to tell people to sit in a room all by yourself and talk to the air? That's foolish. I, I've been in cell phone companies and communications there are all these top-notch communications all around me. And they'll be like, oh, and God talks to you? <clears throat> I said, yeah, and, and we have this wonderful plan. It's unlimited minutes, data, everything. <laughs> you know, no monthly bill or nothing. <clears throat> uh. 
Come on. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 8. Memorize this scripture. Write it down. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. In Deuteronomy, he said, I am the Lord God who healeth thee. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. Isn't the shame he's not that anymore? Wow. Or is he? If he's still the way, if he's still the door, if he's still the truth, then he's still the physician. Before Jesus came in the flesh, he was the I am. And he would say, and the guy said, I know you can, but are you willing? See, the, the word willing the, comes from the word will, and the word will means desire. So he was saying, I've heard about you healing all those people. I know you can. And many of you are sitting here tonight, you're saying, I know you can, but do you desire to heal me? Even, even though I'm unclean, do Jesus... Do you desire to heal me? Because I really don't read the Bible that much. Jesus, I, I put a couple bucks in, but I'm not tied, so you probably don't desire to heal me, do you? When Jesus was raised from the dead, the disciples met him in the hills of Galilee, and they said they worshipped him, but some doubted. You, you'll worship, but you doubt. Does he going to provide for me financially? Is he going to heal me? But see, because you don't know him. When, when you're in traumatic situations, if you don't know him, it's hard to have faith that carries you through. Here's the disciples in his Bible school. They're in a storm. The, the ship is filling up with water. And they went and they woke Jesus up, and they said, Jesus, don't you care that we're about to die? that told me that they didn't know him. They were a fan, they were not a follower. But you're trying to put American dream with Christianity, and when Christ doesn't deliver you the American dream, you think it's obscene. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought into him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatics, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. In America, they medicate devils. They don't cast them out. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took our sins, and he took our sicknesses. Do you ever see someone go to the altar and say, Lord, I want to get saved. Forgive me of my sins. If it be your will. Wow. Wow. The same man that took your sins, took your pains, your diseases, and your sickness. Why are you asking? Here's what you're saying. Come on, communicate with yourself. Do you desire, I know you can, but do you desire to heal me in my condition? Wow. Not my medical condition, in my spiritual condition. You're feeling unworthy. Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with different diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out many, crying out, saying, Thou art Christ the Son of God. And he rebuking them suffered them not to speak, for they knew he was the Christ. Luke chapter 6, verse 17 and 19. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all of Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to him. And he healed to be healed of all their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Let me ask you a question. If you had divine power, to heal people, how many people would you heal? Why would he be any different? He healed all who came to him and some who didn't. 
Some people came and said, my servant's at home, and he healed them. Some, he walked by and just pulled them up and healed them. So some of you are saying, you know, as I've studied all these years about the sick and the disease and the afflicted and, and Christ's miracle working and the disciples healing people, you know, I, I looked for something that was like the missing link. Said, what would, did they all have in common? And I looked like Jesus many places said, your faith has made you whole, but Lazarus was dead. I, I don't think he was practicing faith at the moment. <laughs> and there was the guy that was crippled for 38 years. He didn't even know who he was. So if he didn't know who he was, how could he have faith in him? So I started looking, and I said, what was it that they had all in common? And I finally realized, you know what it was? They were all sick. <laughs> How do you get saved? By faith and receive his grace. Grace is for people that don't deserve it. The same spirit that forgives is the same spirit that heals. So I wonder how you would get healed. By faith, through his grace, for the undeserving. So many of you have not got healed because you thought you weren't good enough. I don't read enough. I don't tithe enough. I don't do this. I don't do that. But if it's by grace, for the undeserving, as one of your pastors, I can tell you tonight, you're all bad enough to get healed. And if you don't believe me, ask your wife, ask your husband, ask the person that, am I bad enough to get Oh, yeah. Because Jesus, I'm a slow learner. So slow in everything. But once I got it, it's mine. And I finally found out that I never go to him in prayer because of my performance. I go to him because of his performance who's seated in heavenly places, who was judged by man and by God as perfect. And he'll never be judged again by anybody that accounts. I go to the Father through Christ, through his performance. I get healed by his performance. By grace, I receive it. Take my sins, take my pains, take my sicknesses. I was telling a person in Mexico, I said, he borne our sins. He, 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 see, if Christ was our substitute, God made him, in the sense of Corinthians, God made him sin. If not, he would have been sacrificing an innocent man. And sin still wouldn't have been paid for. He who knew no sin became sin. <sighs> Some theologians say that where the Bible says that his body wasn't recognizable on the cross, that he was stricken with polio and AIDS and cancer, blindness and deafness. His body was contorted and palsy. And he bore it not only just by the beaten stripes of the whipping. And I told this person in Mexico, I said, the Bible says he born, B-O-R-N-E, which means forcibly took your pain. I said, you're sitting there with pain. It doesn't belong to you. You're holding back from Christ. You're as created as being. You're holding back to him. Uh, and it's a family business, and I, I happen to work for that family business. So on his, be and when you say in Jesus' name, it means in his place, in his stead. I said, in his place, let me take your pain that belongs to him. And that arm that was like this that wouldn't unbend, the shoulder that wouldn't raise, I just went, I take it. Just a gesture, a prophetic gesture. And they begin to move their arm totally free. Because see, they had to get it out of their head. It had to be with the Spirit. Everything in Genesis where God created, he said it's good. So why are you always saying you're not worthy? You're mocking the new creation. How dare you? Don't be talking about my daddy. 
Well, how could God possibly use me? Because he created you to be used. <laughs> You're a new creation. All things are past are dead and gone. He separated your sins from you as far as east is from west. If he separated your sins, if you would separate your sins from you, if you would believe where the word says, sin no longer has dominion over you, but if you keep saying, well, everybody sins, I just have to sin. No sin has no dominion over you. And sickness is a fruit of sin. So sickness should no longer have dominion over you. He's the physician. How many cabinets right now in your houses are full of medicine that you never finish taking? Because you don't follow no one's instructions, not even the doctor or somebody. It was provided free of charge. All I had to do is maybe have, when I went to Wilson High School, oh yeah, with, with 60 cents I got my ski pop and a bag of chips. That was my lunch every day at that little gas station right from where the thing was. It was free school. Taxes paid for it, you know. Well, I'm saying I didn't have to go every day and pay. And I quit. Two weeks in 10th grade. Because it was easy. People with excuses take the path of least resistance. I need to choose another time to go to the gym because I can't take the path of least resistance when my former trainer's there. I get on the leg press and he looks over to, he looks at the weights, looks at me like, I thought you said you were going to add a couple more on it. I'm like, oh, you don't have to say it, it's just a look. I was doing the dumbbells today, and I'm just like, oh, this is getting too easy. I'm about to go up again. Oh. Wouldn't it be cool the one day if I picked the 100 pounder up and start going like that? I think I'll paint some balloons going there, and he'll think, look at him. Oh my gosh. You're looking for a, a straight way. Jesus, how do you want me to eat? Jesus, do you want me to go out walking and praying and talking? Jesus, what do you want me to do to be healed? Jesus, you're the physician. I'm just starting out. I'm only a nurse's aide. I'm just, some of you, when you first started out, I just felt like a candy striper. <laughs> Remember candy stripers? The volunteers? They were just, some of the young people, what, what's that? Is that a bubble gum? <laughs> The older people know what I'm talking about. I hadn't been saved six months, and the Happy Hunters came to the church where I was going to Columbus. And I, and I, work, I actually worked for the church. In six months, I was already working for a church. Shouldn't have been because I was a mess. And <laughs> I was a mess. Just come, I was six months from being a drug dealer now. And I was setting up a table for them to put all their books on. That was back in the days of VHSs. And the guy comes in, and they're weird anyway. The hunters, they're both dead, but they were really weird people. They were like, out there. Well, they were powerful and anointed. Amen. But he comes up, he looks at me, he goes, men of God. And I'm looking, where? Where? Because <laughs> you ain't talking to me. I'm like, is my pack of Marlboro hidden in my back pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Did I take enough breath mints and put on clothes? Come on. He said, you. He put his hand on my chest. He pushed me against the wall. I'm like, nobody touches me. <laughs> it was at my permission. And I didn't get no man permission to touch me. I come from the John Wayne era. Men don't touch men. So you don't get upset if I just don't want to stand and hug you. It's just not how I roll. And if you force it, you might roll. <laughs> now listen to me. Don't all of you rush me to hug me after this service. I, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, I'm not just an ordinary grandfather. I have grandchildren that are superheroes. <laughs> I better put that on the altar. 
I'll have to pay a percentage to Kellen for using it. He pushed me against the wall. I'd never been prophesied to, didn't know what prophecy was. He said, man of God, I hear the Spirit of God saying, you will be used all over the world to bring healing, deliverance, and you'll even see the dead raised. I didn't know what it was, and I wanted to grab his hand, take a bar, uh, an arm bar hold, and take him to the ground. But there was this weirdest feeling all over me, and all I could do was cry. Then he, he got a box, and he put one of every videotape and one of every book and gave it to me. And I went home and started watching. I learned how to grow out arms and legs six months after being saved. And I started seeing these miracles and demons coming out of people in these videos. And, and I lived uh, the outskirts of Columbus. And so when I didn't have nothing to do, I would r ride around 270, pick up hitchhikers, and practice growing out arms and legs and trying to heal the sick. Because I didn't say, wow, I'm just going to go to all these meetings. I said, I'm going to be a meeting. He's a great physician. He says, it's expedient that I go back because I'm limited, even in my glorified body, to be at one place at one time. But if I send my Holy Spirit, he can fill all of you. Then all of you can go all over and all you can do this. He's a great physician. So until you know he's the physician, you'll never step into your position. And I hear so many people, that's not my gift. I'm just a teacher. I'm just a pastor. I'm this, this. These signs shall follow all. It's not just for the extroverts. I have quietly cast out devils. I've been in the prayer line and be like, I'll kill them, I'll kill you. I'm like, shut up. There's people here you'll scare, and I ain't going to allow that. Just shut up and come out. Hey. There it went. <laughs> <laughs> you come out with an inside voice, not an outside voice. He's the physician. My wife is an administrator. She needs detail. I didn't understand her five million, 500 million questions was trying to gra gather information because she's an administrator and she needs detail to, to do this stuff. I'd be like, look, I got a mama. I don't need a mama. You don't need to ask me where I'm going, what I'm doing. Me and Annie says, whenever we don't need to give you all these answers. Will you get your nose out of my business, woman? <laughs> I can't stand this. Uh, no, no, I'm going somewhere with this. I was hindering her from her position because of my understanding. Many of you, because of your understanding, are hindering Jesus from being the physician. So let me declare today, you are bad enough <laughs> to get healed. <laughs> Isn't that a whole different way to look at it? Grace. Undeserving. Not through your performance because that wouldn't be fair. There's many of us that can't perform, don't understand it. The people that I've seen healed that, that weren't even right in their mind. They brought me a little baby that was mentally retarded in, in Central America. The baby had never walked. I didn't know that. They held the baby and his legs were like this and says, the, and, and the interpreter, there were so many people, the prayer language was long. I said, just tell me what it is. And he just goes, this was Lewis, but this was before he died, my interpreter. He said, Brian, the legs are just messed up. I said, okay, legs be healed in Jesus' name. Give me the next one. Because the line was just so long, and I was covered with sweat. It was so hot. They bring the next one, bring the next one. All of a sudden, I hear all these people hollering and carrying on. I turn out, so what's the matter? And he's standing there crying. He goes, look, the, 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 little, the little boy, you, or it was a little girl. The little girl you pray for, she's walking. I'm like, well, what? She couldn't walk for her? She has never walked. I said, well, she begins to tell me more of the story. Her legs were deformed and twisted. She had never even stood on them. Not only was the miracle that her legs were healed, but the miracle was that she now walked without any teaching or training or anything. Come on, somebody. He is the physician. Give him praise. Come on. Begin to read in... The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and 
Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's called the Synoptic Gospel, then the Gospel of John. Read and see where it said he healed them all. And include yourself in all. Become an all. It's his desire. When he said, I will, here's what he's saying. I desire to heal even the unclean. You will heal the lesbians. I see it all the time in the prisons. You will heal the homosexuals. I've seen it in foreign countries. A man came to me and said, don't say nothing out loud. I'm gay. And I have AIDS. And I'm dying. I said, wow. That's the harvest of your sin, isn't it? He goes, yeah. I said, you can go now. I got a long prayer line. He said, excuse me? Aren't you going to pray for me? I said, why should I pray for you that God would heal you so that you could continue serving the devil? Wow. If you want to repent, because you know this, that's why you're whispering, you know this is wrong. Wow. Well, even if they're proclaiming it aloud, they still know it's wrong. He repented of his sins. The last three times I went to Africa, there he was in church. Wow. Blood tests free. And it wasn't because of me. It's because he changed his lifestyle, his mind. Are you just a fan? Or are you a follower? It'll cost you if you're going to follow. I hindered her from being an administrator. Now I know to give her detail. To allow Jesus to be the healer, you've got to allow him to do it. You've got to have a conversation with him. You got to say, what is my prescription? Because you know what? You want him to do it all. But he's going to say, the reason you're sick is because there's some things that need to be changed in your life. Now, I know some people genetically, and you, you, there are certain things. If it doesn't apply to you, don't get upset with me. Okay? Just like if I'm talking about big feeted people tonight, if you're a small footed person, you, you shouldn't get upset with me. If I'm talking about smokers, if you're a non-smoker, you shouldn't be talking. If I'm preaching about adultery and you don't commit adultery, you shouldn't be upset with it. So if you know you have a medical condition because of a mess up of a doctor or a generational or something, I'm not upset with myself because I got high blood pressure because I'm a little bit overweight, but my mama had it, her mama, it's, it's, a, it's a DNA. But I'm seeking and proclaiming healing and I will get it. And I don't care how long it takes, I'm not putting a... See, so you've got to quit putting a timeline on God. Amen. I'll see women do stuff like, well, if you love me, you quit smoking. Honey, this ain't got nothing to do with love. This is an addiction. Quit being stupid. Quit trying to make the man jump through your hoop. If you love me, you'll go to church. He's going to resent church. The church is going to become the other man. You're going home. Oh, the pastor did this. Oh, this was so great here. And he sees you're more excited about them. Don't. Let church change you. So he wants to say, I need to go there and see what in the world's going on. Because you getting, you getting better. Good. Every time I come home, I'm just like, man, you get better looking every time you go away. Psychologically, she's trying to get me to leave more. <laughs> Have you seen a change in me? For the good? <laughs> you can be a little bit more oomph. <laughs> you ask her for more oomph, she goes, I'm still here, ain't I? <laughs> she enjoyed that too much, didn't she? Did you learn anything tonight about the physician? Come on, give the Lord praise. He is not only the physician, he's the great physician. So tonight on your way home or when you get home, you're in your prayer closet. Speak to the great physician. Make an appointment with him. No matter how much you know. 
One of the hardest things is for nurses and medical people to receive supernatural healing because they know so much. See, you can be healed, but your symptoms still there because he cursed the fig tree, but it didn't go away immediately. It can't be because of your experience. It's got to be because of your faith in his word, that he's the physician. Have faith in God, not have faith in your faith, not have faith in yourself, not have faith in your pastor or the minister that's praying for you. Have faith in God. Give the Lord a great big God bless. If you need prayer, there'll be people up here to pray for you. We dismiss you. We love you very much.